Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Dennis Schraubi, and I'm going to be your host for today's big event. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. Uh, there's still some people getting in here, so uh, we're going to go ahead and um, get started here momentarily. Diversify your lead generation strategy. Why it's important to have multiple lead generation sources, uh, not putting all your eggs in one basket here. Uh, again, <clears throat> thank you for participating in today's webinar. Uh, we do want to make this as interactive as we possibly can. Uh, therefore, we're, we have um, our chat. So if you want to ask questions, go ahead and put questions in the Q&A or put questions in the chat. Uh, we'll either try and pause during the presentation today uh, and or we'll answer them at the end of uh, today's uh, session. So again, just want to thank everybody for participating. Um, if you could, for just one second, actually, this would be kind of helpful. Make sure that you can see me and you can hear me. Um, if you could, please raise your hand. Uh, if you can see my screen, because if you are raising your hand, I'm guessing you can hear me as well. Um, all right, Corinthian, thank you very much for raising your hand. Appreciate that. Holly, thank you for dropping on by. Several more people um are are in thank you again so let's go ahead and get it uh get it started get it rolling um so i would like to thank our webinar sponsors uh, hello dot website is a web platform that you can go out a uh, content management system that easily build your own do-it-yourself uh website Surf Pro of the Valley, really, uh, servicing all of Mahoning, Trumbull, uh, and, and places beyond that. They're one of the largest Surf Pro franchisees in the entire United States, which is really cool to have their backing. And Lyft Marketing out of Canfield, Ohio. Thank you for participating and sponsoring our event. So <clears throat> today, our um, agenda, website, uh, first of all, so about leveraging your website, search engine, marketing, landing pages, all that good stuff. And uh, the key to being a good solid lead generation source, uh, that storefront can get that, you can get that working for you. The next one is email marketing. Uh, talk about some ways that you could grow your list, use your list and mine the data in your email uh, to bubble warm opportunities up for your sales team. So again, uh, we're talking about multiple sources of lead generation, why that's important. Uh, advertising, traditional digital advertising, social media, what role does social media play in lead generation and events, uh, webinars, trade shows, and more. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to say as we jump into the website and having multiple, um, having multiple uh, sources of uh, lead generation is really comes down, the diversi diversification is very similar to a stock portfolio. Uh, the reason is that obviously you want to insulate yourself as best as you possibly can uh, in order to be able to make sure that if there's a channel that's not producing for you, that you have another channel that is producing for you. Um, the second is that in the current state of affairs in the world that we live in today, um, the channels at which we distribute content and reach our audiences is really fractured. And what I mean by that there's really not one medium that's dominating um, the ecosystem of where people consume information. It used to be TV, radio, newspaper. Um, now we've got uh, web, and within web, we've got a whole sort uh, sorts of avenues that you can engage with content. Um, obviously, streaming, YouTube, OTT. Um, you've got your billboards, you've got your movie theaters that sh show advertising, you've got paid paid for strategies online. So there's another reason as to you know why um, you can't. Okay, good. The, the, so these are all the reasons why, right? Um, the next the next one beyond one channel is producing, one is not. Um, it really gives you an opportunity to double down. And what I mean by that is that if you don't have a, a channel that might be working, but you find one that does, 
uh, then you get an opportunity to be able to parlay that into into more and bigger opportunities. Now, the one thing that you have to be careful of is getting too wide too soon. And what I mean by that is that you can't go and do web um, TV billboard and some organizations do have the budget but most do not so trying to figure out uh, where you need to play and then cascading that lead gen program uh, is really this the way that we've gone about it with ourselves and our clients and that is that we decided that we'd go website first along with the social media strategy and then as we go that route um, then we're then we start to look at ways that we can diversify. So, do we want a paid strategy on top of our our organic strategy? Do we want do we have enough budget to go with TV, radio, newspaper if it makes sense, um, events, things of that nature? So, in order to be able to diversify, we want to make sure that we've got one or two channels that is producing leads for us on a, on a pretty consistent basis. The other thing is uh, is identifying um, how you're going to measure your lead generation. So these are a couple caveats, right? Here's the why, good to diversify. The next is as you launch your lead gen program is how are you going to measure this? And various organizations, we, we always start pretty much with, hey, here's a lead and go follow up with that, whether it's in the B2B or B2C environment. Um, and then we get some sophistication behind it. And once we do, then we start to invoke some sort of lead qualification system. With the lack of marketing automation software in certain clients, we use budget authority need and timeline. And we tend to say, this is a prospect suspect, or then they convert into a marketing qualified lead, which that might be an individual that filled out a form, or even potentially that's an individual that uh, signed up to come to a webinar and participated in the webinar, um, there might be some additional things within that participation that says, hey, this is a marketing qualified lead, and now this is, becomes a sales ready lead, uh, and how do, we, how do we define that? When you have marketing automation software, you can actually score your leads based upon behaviors and interactions with your website, participations um, in uh, events, emails that open interactions with social media or downloads even and when the score gets to a certain threshold you could turn it over to your sales organization uh, and the idea there is that you're giving over more of a warm lead if you do not have that then you're utilizing a manual system uh, that basically says did this or organization or individual show that they have some budget that they have the authority what's the need and on the product or service and what's the timeline and then in that particular instance we we tend to do one of two things we either give those directly to the sales organization uh, and or we have we have in certain instances we have a junior sales team that goes down through the prospecting of those to convert those individuals and then we start keeping track so um, I think that any business that's out there today um should be looking at starting their lead gen strategy most people are like well is a website really a lead gen strategy and i'd argue this or i'd debate this or i try and sell you on this that having a sound search engine optimization plan in a search engine marketing plan uh so that your website is coming up in first place first position is a very strong play when it comes to people finding you and then taking the next steps. And before I get there for a second, if you're a business that's doing, you know, global or coast to coast North American business, it's a little bit of a different strategy. But for organizations that are in the local economy, Google My Business, I would say for the past three to five years, has been one of the biggest referral sources to websites that I manage um, over that five year time span. And we know this because we track form fills and we track um, calls uh, through a, a, a tracking mechanism. Um, and we can see that a lot of the referral traffic when we get a form fill comes from Google My Business Finds. Um, and people don't think a lot of times that, well, is that really a lead gen program? And, and it is a part of it because you can't get somebody to fill out a form if they can't find you. 
uh, it's highly imperative that in your lead gen strategy um, that obviously content's going to be a part of the play. Is it going to be an ebook that people are downloading? Is it going to be a webinar? Uh, is it a PDF of a brochure of, of your product? And at a certain point, you have to decide that you build a landing page and how much of that content are you going to gate? And gate means that you're going to put a form on that landing page and have me exchange your online currency of email. Uh, name, business, in exchange for my totally awesome content. Uh, and so you're always, we're always looking to fine tune that because then what we have, what happens is if somebody downloads that piece of content through a landing page, early on in a lead gen strategy, we absolutely look at it and we say, okay, this is a lead for the sales organization. But as we get more leads into the sales organization and our, our lead strategy lead gen strategy grows we then we then a lot of times take downloads of ebooks and we begin to nurture them with our junior sales organizations um, and or just simply put into an email strategy trying to get them more sales ready uh, same thing with the paid strategy so as you're looking to whether it's social media or google or your geofencing um, you are making some decisions based upon that spend. A lot of people don't like to put money directly into a paid spend just to create uh, awareness for a brand. But you got to keep in mind that you, without awareness, you can't create leads. So with that said, we have a mixture where we take social media, uh, which uh, does absolutely have a play in the lead gen strategy. Uh, a lot of times with our social media, strategy we're utilizing a direct form fill within the application so people do not have to leave that that position but nine times out of ten when we have a paid strategy we're driving them to a landing page um, to fill out a form to download something for free or get a free trial or a free demo um, or something of that nature uh, a quote um, a free you know design plan whatever that is uh, we typically do drive people back to um a a a page um if we move on from website anybody have any questions though um that i can go deeper on um and i'll come back to it as well so if i if i've passed you up or you have a question in the chat or in a q the q a feel free to go ahead and, and ask that um email marketing uh, that's another definite channel that we tap into both for ourselves and also for our client base um, we utilize various email marketing systems uh, whether it's constant contact mailchimp or we go with the marketing automation suite like a, a marketo or a hubspot um, number one uh, we are looking to build out lists for our clients um, on our, our crow's cabinets kitchen company we built out kitchen planners and kitchen design books that people can go and give us an email exchange opt in to get valuable offers in the future or stay updated on on content from us um, so number one you gotta have you gotta have a strategy in place um, and I, I don't necessarily recommend that everybody that fills out a list unless you've got some criteria that you're going to end up calling those individuals a lead um, I look at those people that are obviously going into that list as a as a nurturing opportunity for somebody that's interested in your brand, and they're really not somebody that you're looking to um, convert. And I don't want to say that all the time, but it just a lot of times it depends on the transaction. Uh, so if it's a lot to a little or a little to a lot, uh, it just takes some time for people to. Um, go through their process, but obviously, if you could get them into your con if you could get them into your database, then you have an opportunity to really connect with them. Second thing is frequency in managing and looking at how frequently are you sending emails? What are the open rates? What are the click through rates? And what exactly, um, you know, how how a frequency how often are you sending that and is there an impact to your database based upon the amount of emails that you send it's always interesting if you go into if you if you're managing a gmail inbox 
and not an outlook. You can look at your different inboxes. You have your primary, then you have your updates. Uh, and there's two others. You can type in any one brand that you have in that inbox. And then the fun thing to do, if you, you're into this sort of thing, is to go and look and see when you type in that, like if you just copy and paste that email into the search bar, you'll see how many times a day, not week or month, but how many times a day some of these brands are sending emails to connect with their audience because they know that there's a lot of email that's obviously getting not getting through. Um, um, so list building obviously is very important. You want high open rates, high engagement rates, um, and you want to stay within the legal parameters. You know, you got you got this log in front of you of trying to figure out how to, you know, to build that list with content and service and so forth and so on. Uh, don't um, um, frequency. What do you send? Is every uh, is every send a promo, or is it some valuable information, some content that your audience would like? And then I utilize call to actions, light to heavy. So light being, hey, read this blog article. Hey, middle of the road is attend this webinar. Heavy is, hey, buy a ticket to come to do your live or sit and have a meeting with me about marketing services. So we've that varies. Now here's where I really feel the lead gen aspect of email marketing comes into play and it comes into the data and to the behavior of the interaction within the data. So what I mean by that is this, out of these email sends, we don't get a significant amount of people in the call to actions that are taking the meetings with us um, to talk about marketing services. Um, the light to middle to heavy of the road we do pretty good with people wanting to be a part of our webinars or sign up for uh, to be on you know our live podcast those sorts of things but if we really want to hone into um, our audience we're looking at the opens and more specifically a lot of a lot of times to click through lists and what we're doing is as we look at the behavior of the interaction with those emails we're then from there utilizing that to warm call. And we'll download a lot of times um, for ourselves and our clients, we'll download the click-through list from the email campaigns of the last two, three, five sends. And now we've taken a database of 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 contacts, and we've distilled it down to maybe two, 3% of the audience that's the most heavily engaged with us. And the goal there is not to be cold calling, but the goal there is to be warm calling. And so therefore, the my belief is that after, you know, um, 10, 15 sends, and you've got this engaged audience, that there should be some cognitive fluency there and some recognition of your brand. And connecting with those each of those individuals um, on LinkedIn and or then, you know, sending out an email uh, with some additional content and then kind of nurturing it along from there. Uh, is the way that we approach it. I'm not bullish enough to call those leads, but I am I am of the mindset that these are warm contacts that we should absolutely you know be working out of a database and and it's a manageable number. So on a weekly to monthly basis, it could be 10, 20, maybe 50 contacts that we're handing over to a sales organization. And then we're monitoring how many of those people out of that email marketing campaign, that were engaged are now converting into uh, marketing qualified, sales qualified uh, leads and then moving down the funnel into opportunities. So hopefully that makes sense to all of you and how we, you know, how we approach our email marketing. You may have something different that you're doing. Um, would love to hear it in the chat if you are. Um, and if you have questions, go ahead and feel free to make sure that you ask away. I'd be glad to ask, answer any questions that you have. As far as advertising goes, um, you know, it's funny. We run we run this digital conference, and I think that um, a lot of people think that I'm anti, um, I guess, advertising or paid advertising. But the fact of the matter is, even though that I believe that you should own your own story and, and from a content and, and push content, 
Um, there's obviously a, a need for, for a spend uh, that it fulfills. In fact, most clients now at this point, we don't take them on unless they're willing to spend um, our recommended spend for their industry. So that's usually between anywhere between 100 to 500 dollars a month because a lot of them are small to mid-sized businesses. I do have clients that are spending two, five, ten thousand dollars a month on their paid um, advertising strategy online that we're managing. Um, but for a lot of small businesses, you know, if we're solely going to rely upon a digital play and social media, I tell them all the time that we need to have at least 100 to 500 dollars a month um, that we can work with if we're in a local setting. Um, and again, like all these things are on the table um, because uh, number one, from a digital perspective, you can really distill down into your target markets um, and you can really do some very fantastic things from a targeting perspective that allow you to get to who you think that your, your, your buyer is or your customer is. Um, and so that is another avenue that we, the way that we diversify the lead gen strategy. Um, it's a combination of, hey, we wanna build a boatload of awareness for this brand, being somebody that can solve your issue, solve your problem. We wanna give away value with our content. And then at the same note, we do want to engage with you and, and convert you. Um, I think that one of the things that people are overlooking at this point is that, you know, podcasts are obviously nothing new and they've really, really, like are widely adopted, right? Um, webinars, email, sponsorship, replacement. So instead of having to always go out and build uh, an audience, which I'm a big fan of, um, you can get there a lot quicker by finding a podcast that's got a pretty good following uh, in your demographics, um, in your target audience, and just go and sponsor that and get some placement, get some coverage there. Um, so don't overlook those things as opportunities. Um, one of the things that, and, and I have this kind of disjointed just a little bit. So again, not opposed to traditional advertising. TV has a place, uh, especially for certain products, certain audiences, radio, newspaper, billboard. Uh, one of the things in both of these cases, um, one of the things in both of these cases that I, I am a big fan of um what is to utilize call tracking technology so we use a we use a product called call rail and if i'm running a billboard campaign for a client uh, as opposed to what the billboard sales rep will tell you because they actually don't like you to do this um i'll wear up a call tracking number specifically for that billboard because i want to see the effectiveness as to whether or not we're getting any calls from it um, and I contribute all I can can attribute all my lead gen back to that. Um, you can have a specific landing page or a specific URL. Uh, you could create a, a a promo code specific to that campaign. So if you say you sponsored the Do You Live podcast, um, and we said you know you want to track us with a promo code that's like Do Yo Twenty Two. You're like, all right, that's fine. So anybody that purchases and make and and you know they get a discount. So anybody that uses that promo code, you're able to go back and you're able to track the effectiveness of this. I highly recommend it. Um, QR codes. Well, there, there's probably not one thing that we've done in the past four or five years that hasn't included a QR code, especially on a print or on a sign. Um, and now you're seeing them even in TV ads. So these are mechanisms by which you can incorporate into all of your social media, digital advertising and traditional um, that help you to track conversion because you wanna know the effectiveness of what you're doing. Now, um, what happened to my mouse? He ran away. It's so funny too, because I was gonna say on my website, like build a mouse trap, build a better mouse trap. And I had a picture of a mouse and a mouse trap. But then I was like, that's like the wrong connotation that we want to capture something that we want to kill. So I killed it, but um my my pad, sorry to digress, but my pad got away from me. So uh, let me see here. All right. So events. Um don't overlook events. Um, you know. 
COVID and the pandemic made webinars a very crowded space, one that we played in for a very long time. Uh, but I still am very big on the webinar as a content strategy. And the reason is, is that it's content with a purpose. So if you go out and whatever your industry is and you create a blog, um, it's a piece of content that may or may not get read. Uh, what's the call to action? Call us for an appointment. Um, come and see us. But I think webinars are content with a purpose. So you can produce a blog. You got email. You got your digital page strategy. You've got your social media strategy. And there's a registration for the event that if you ask qualifying questions, now you're starting to fill up that lead funnel. You get the webinar recording. You repurpose the webinar in a lot of different ways. Ebook, the recording, a podcast, um, short tweets from you know what was said in the webinar, and a, and all these different things that come out of it. And on top of that, you get lead generation. So we're a big fan of that. Um, trade shows. I have a client of mine that does a lot of business in uh, healthcare. And so they sponsor a lot of local healthcare events. Uh, they'll sponsor the Panerathon. They'll do things like that to where they're directly tied to already having some business in those organizations. And because they're willing to sponsor them and then actually get out and go network, it's a really solid play for them keeping their existing clients, their clients, which a lot of people from a lead gen strategy overlook that. Uh, and then obviously um, uh, you get you, you get your new opportunities as well. Uh, concerts, you know, we just had a big one in Youngstown this summer. Why Live has been a big event. Whether you want to geofence that or you know put your name on it or hold hold a party, uh, when you hold that party, you know, are those people that are coming there? You know, are you getting some information out of them in return for the free drink or the free food that you might be? passing along to them that they can enter into your lead funnel. Um, you know, Youngstown State University, prime example, YSU tailgating is a, is, is a really nice offering. Uh, maybe that's going to be a part of your lead gen strategy. Uh, in the event that it, that it is, you know, and you're going to throw a tailgate party on Saturdays to engage your existing customer base and, and hopefully find some new people that you can invite. Um, charity functions. We've done uh, networking events where they've been over bocce. Uh, we just want to try to find a lot of different ways that we connect. So the way that we ran our networking group for a number of years was over breakfast, lunch, and happy hour. And we'd have different audiences that were attending you know, those different events. We would sometimes just have an open table discussion, sometimes have a formal presentation. And there were individuals within that that would say we like the formal presentation and they'd come to those but they didn't come to the open networking sessions and the fact of the matter is this is that we felt that both of those individuals were our customer and we wanted to tap into that so that's why we were willing to to go and kind of do some different events if we limited ourselves to just open table events then we miss out on that individual that likes the structured presentation and then ultimately doesn't buy a ticket to come to do your live um so so at the end of the day, um, you know, do, were we gonna continue to spend our time on the formal presentations and the networking? Um, so we evaluate that and we see how many people were at those various events that are converting into um, customers. And, and you know what, let me back up for a second and just say it, it's almost better when we convert them into fans. Because a fan is, is sometimes better than a customer in the sense that you know they're going to go out, they're going to rave for you, for your brand, they're going to endorse you in, in at events and social media and word of mouth type of marketing. So that's um, kind of my view of the world there. Um, social media. So social media is play in in all of this. this is my opinion uh, for for us and for our clients and is that it's a medium that gives us an opportunity to have bi-directional communication, even as limited as it is uh, on some platforms nowadays, uh, to be able to go out and, and utilize those channels in order to be able to grow our audience uh, and potentially convert people into clients. Um, it's still, for the most part, a, 
a time play versus you know me having to pay for that audience however there's some experts on the line that are like oh but and you're right um facebook pages are so limited to any sort of engagement but facebook advertising is such a good play um so therefore again like any clients that we have that we're we're bringing on we say if facebook is your 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 play that's fine but we're going to have to invest some money in it um i've seen facebook groups working really well um in in some various ways the people are utilizing that for lead gen um you know they all all the platforms have an audience um and and you know all the platform when i say an audience they you know there's an audience that you can tap into uh whether it's local whether it's i mean that's the thing about the web it's the big demo democratizing factor of the world that whatever basically you're interested in you can find that and you can find the community of people that also embrace that at scale so um lead gen tracker now this is really important so if you're going to get diversified you're going to get wide and have three four five different programs all going at the one at one time um, it's a very good idea that you either utilize your tech stack with your crm and your marketing automation software or it's simply a, an excel spreadsheet that's a dashboard that will allow you to track the micro and the macro behavior of your campaigns um, on a monthly basis and develop a lead classification system so i've always been a fan of mql sql um, i have been a hubspot customer where i'm able to lead score and trigger a lead at a, at a certain threshold um, and and basically utilize that and speak that language on a regular basis and give yourself an opportunity to track that and then get into the micro of the individual leads uh, and tracking lead to sales opportunity conversion uh, apply the dollar amounts and then get into lead opportunity win loss and then this starts to build <coughs> This starts to build for you a data set that allows you to say, okay, so we did X, Y, and Z program, and X and Y, X generated 100 leads, Y generated 150 leads, and Z generated no leads. And then you're like, all right, so maybe we should be doing Y. But then you get into it and you see, well, you know, X actually created more opportunities and more wins than than Y. So what did we do in those campaigns that helped us convert more opportunities? So where do we double down? Uh, and that's really what you're trying to do. And the last thing that I'll tell you is this. So every one of every one of my clients, including myself, uh, we're able to get pretty dialed in because of call rail on phone calls and form fills, we're able to cover a lot of our basis with where the last touch point of acquisition has come from. So that's what we're kind of measuring here when we say, hey, lead gen, uh, where did you come from? It's very difficult to manage the other five, 10, 15, 20 touch points um, if you're not utilizing a marketing automation software that will basically track anonymous to known ip addresses so in marketing automation you're going to be able to see how many times people came back to your website and what they engaged with if you don't have that sophistication which a lot of small businesses don't utilize then you're kind of regulated to um and you're kind of regulated to saying okay what were the other touch points and um you're able to look at your email data and and download it and say well this person opened and clicked through you know five emails um you're limited on website visits um but you are getting your last touch point acquisition so i i want to be very clear about something because we have an organization that i'm working with now where we're getting maybe a linkedin form fill or we're getting um a form fill on the website and then we also have a junior sales team 
and we're putting all of the eggs into the junior sales team saying, hey, they generated another lead for us. And the reality is that there was some additional touch points along the way that we can't ignore. So just make sure that when you, at least from my experience, when, when we're measuring lead gen uh, and talking about where is it coming from, um, we are we are looking at a lot of times the last touch point acquisition uh, that got them there. Um, and then, thank you. Uh, we'll be taking place. Um, questions, by the way. You got any questions? Hopefully, I got some answers for you. Um, Duyo will be back in November. It's either going to be the first or second uh, Thursday in November. We're just finalizing that now. Uh, we've got a great list of speakers, a great lineup. It's going to be a little different. Um, I like the idea of tweaking the format. Uh, from what we've done in in the past and so I'm really excited about it I'm excited to be back in person in live the past few years we took a time out because of uh, the pandemic uh, but we're really looking forward to connecting with you in this community in, in real life and thank you all for uh, continually to stick by us uh, in our in our attempt here to you know, just help to create a marketing uh, an entrepreneurial community that can service one another. Um, this was recorded and I will make it available on demand. I appreciate all of you coming out today uh, to be a part of today's webinar. If you have any questions, um, you can connect with me at Dennis at doyolive.com. That's in the chat. Um, be glad to take whatever uh, emails that you want to send over my way. And um, yeah, I hope that all of you have a, a great rest of your day. Take care.